Wow, yeah, I got that one. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Got that and, oh, sure, sure, this one. Okay, that's good enough. Um. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Sunday, October the 15th, and Nolan, you know, Nolan, get this, Nolan is baptized. And he's just a little squirt. He's only about this big. So he's had no chance yet to get all the kind of bling and accolades that somebody like me has gotten over the years. I mean, he doesn't have much to brag, but I've got certificates and I've got diplomas and I've got things that are accolades and honorifics and trophies, all kinds of things. You know what? I even have, I even have a letter from Ronald Reagan himself. <laughs> that must mean I'm really something or does it <laughs> the apostle paul a long time ago does a kind of fake brag with his philippian friends he writes to them about all of his bling but counts it all as rubbish or as garbage for the surpassing worth of knowing christ so how about you have you got all of this stuff or is there more let's go to church Let us pray. Holy God, in baptism, you name us and claim us and call us your own forever. Nothing we own can ever compare to your love. Help us hold fast to the one who holds us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading today is from Philippians, chapter 3, verses 4b through 8a and 12. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, 
These I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
99% of the human body is made up of just six constituent chemicals, or elements, really. 99%. And you can kind of guess what they are. For instance, you know, most of us is water, so what would you anticipate would be the first two elements? Oxygen and hydrogen. Now, you need hot air, too, so we are significantly nitrogen, and we're carbon and calcium, and we're a bit of phosphorus. That last 1% of the human body accounts for something like six or eight different trace elements, little bits of minerals, and in my case, you know, a little bit of stainless steel um, right here. The average American adult at 180 pounds, if you took the retail value of those chemical compounds, you end up with something like $580, maybe $600, depending on where that market is. I asked Danielle about Nolan's weight today, and by my rough calculation, that makes Nolan worth about 46 bucks. <laughs> What's Nolan worth, really? Now, it's also true, and they already know this, that parents will, over the course of a child's lifetime, invest another 450, 475,000 bucks, if you count college, to raise them. Raise them to the age of emancipation. Had he been born next year, inflation would have get that, gotten that number up close to half a million dollars. I think Grandpa would help, I think. Um, so what is Nolan worth? What are you worth? The Apostle Paul was in prison. And this is a kind of a fanciful picture. We don't really know how it looked. Um, there, there's parts of that image that just don't work and couldn't work given the time and the place and the real actual historical context. And, and we don't know a lot about that imprisonment. Was, was Paul actually chained, chained to a wall in a Roman uh, basement somewhere? Or was it more like house arrest with the, with the view of the water? We don't know. But we do know that Paul had been beaten. We do know that Paul had been shipwrecked and tortured and was dogged by some mystery illness. He was partially blind, and we know that the executioner was at the door. What was his state of mind at a time like that? Whatever the exact circumstances, we, we know that he was allowed pen and paper, or, well, better yet, quill and parchment, in all likelihood. And so what does the apostle do? He writes. He writes to his beloved friends all across the Mediterranean, especially to his beloved and most favorite of communities, the folks at Philippi. And do you remember what he writes? He writes about his accomplishments, he writes about his status, but behind it all is he kind of wondering, wondering if it was all worth it, wondering if his life has mattered, wondering, yikes, is this it? If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, he says. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ my Lord. I count it all loss. Um, in one of the translations, the, the value or the, the word that the translator uses there is the word rubbish. If, if you read more commentators, you see that in Koine Greek, they rather politely interpret that word to be dung. The actual word? It's the S word. 
uh, skubala in Koine Greek, but, you know, we're, we've got young ones present today. I count it all skubala. Whoa. Did that set the Philippians kind of back on their heels? What is the Apostle Paul worth? What are you worth? In my office, I have kind of a small pile of frame documents that I've sort of been collecting over the years. Um, I have awards and credentials. I have diplomas. There's a record of my ordination and some synodical recognition of my years of service. I, I have a copy of the diploma, my master's from you know Berkeley, and I've got there the the bachelor's in education and a certificate of my associate of arts degree in biblical studies. I've got something from the ELEA that says I'm the pastor of the universe. I mean the pastor of the year. And you know, just these recognitions. Um, pictures of my kids. Pictures of, of my grandparents. Pictures even of the ship on which my ancestors came over from Norway. And I'll be honest, I don't count it all as scubala. But I also know that compared to what maybe you'd have on your wall, you know, big deal. In the larger, grander scheme of things, what am I really worth? Now, deep into their 80s, um, my parents have begun the transition. Um, after 50 years in a house where I spent some of my teenage years, it's time. It's time for assisted living. So my siblings and I have come alongside and begun the work. You've been there. There's some sorting to do, some downsizing and some hard choices that are necessary. And so, honestly, there's been some pretty candid conversations with my pop. Um, what matters? What's meaningful? What do you want to have go along with you? So we went down and started looking over things and talked about furniture. Eh. Talked about tools. Eh. Talked about records. Eh. But then he walked me over to a bulletin board uh, above what had been his home office. And there's all kinds of bling, and he's got certificates on the wall just like I do. And we started to look, and he said, I don't care about this. It's, it's scubala. I don't care about that either. That's just scubala. But then he pulled one thing off, and it was a medallion. And it said, 2014 Senior Men's Softball World Series Champions. <laughs> My dad was the pitcher and the coach that year. This one, he said. I want to save this one. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. If we were to stop and ask Sean and Danielle, what is Nolan worth? Would they say 46 bucks on the retail market for chemicals? Would, would they say a half a million bucks in 18, 19 years? No, what would they say? What's Nolan worth? Everything. Everything. The Apostle Paul closes this part of his letter. He says, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus, what, has made me his own. So is there a, a clue, an indicator, a reliable measure of our value, of our worth in the death and the resurrection of Jesus? What are you worth? What are we all worth? Everything in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One, two, three.
War, earthquake, politics. I am grateful for the joy of a baptism today to remind me of all of our baptisms. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, we pray. God of us, you created us good and not perfect. Help us be who you would have us be. Strengthen the resolve of your church that together we press on toward the goal of your call in Jesus Christ. God of peace, you command us to be still and you know, and know you are God. We pray for a just peace among the nations. Guide leaders so that they may guide with wisdom and integrity. God of all compassion, you pour yourself out like water and wine for your people. Have mercy on all who cry out. We remember those affected by earthquakes in Afghanistan and by war. Have mercy on those who hunger and all in any need. We remember Jan Carlson, Jerry Soley, Marilyn Bloomfield, Mary Ann Harvey, our young ones, Tyler James, Gracie, Holly, and Maverick, and all those we name aloud are silently in our hearts. God of hope, build up and enliven this congregation so that all the children you call to come to you may find a faithful and joyful witness to your enduring love. Comfort all who grieve, rejoice with those who celebrate, for you are Lord of all and in all. Amen. And we pray together the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You know, it is so good to share together in worship, whether that's in person in the sanctuary or right here online. Well, it's time for the news. We hope that you found your way to the church's website because there's all kinds of things. There are ways to find information, sign up for the e-news. You can get onto the church's YouTube channel. You can even share a gift and make a contribution. Today begins the Reverend Dr. Rick Rouse's class on Christian nationalism. That's at 11. That's on YouTube. You can go ahead and connect. Some of us are getting together to journey through grief. If that's you, let me know. Well, the Synod's Women's Gathering is happening here at Our Saviors, and Beth Lewis and Phyllis Houston are championing that cause. Pastor Squires is telling me that family and friends gathering this time is scary but it's not too scary. All right, the annual Neighborhood Outreach Trunk Retreat, that's coming up very soon as well. Maybe you're new to our saviors. We wanna buy you lunch. We wanna to get together and talk about the particulars of life in this congregation. You know, Kendall tells me that they're quite excited about the holiday food drive that's coming in just a few weeks. 
It's been a hard time on planet Earth with war and famine and fire and earthquakes and floods. What are we to do? The folks at Lutheran World Relief have a way to make a difference. And your support makes that big difference. So we give thanks with a grateful heart. Go in peace. Your life matters. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.